So I'm here today to talk to you about Cambridge. Now, do you know anything about Cambridge at all? Nothing. Okay. Fantastic. Good. I can give you everything. Um, so at Discover, we offer three different levels of Cambridge classes. So we have FCE, CAE, and CPE. Okay. Uh, now, so one of the first differences between Cambridge and IELTS is that they never expire. Okay. When you take IELTS, what happens after two years? Gone. Yeah, after two years for IELTS, they're gone. But with Cambridge, your results never expire. Okay, ten years from now, the results are still technically valid. Um, another big difference is um, in the speaking test. Yeah, when you do the IELTS speaking test, who's in the room? It's you and the examiner and the interlocutor. You're all by yourself. But in Cambridge, you get to go with a partner. And your partner, 99% of the time, is going to be somebody from your class. Another difference between IELTS and Cambridge is that um, in IELTS, in the listening, right, you get to listen only one time. So if you <coughs> cough or sneeze or you just didn't hear, too bad. It's gone. Yeah. But with Cambridge, you get to listen two times. And then our final difference really is um, also our biggest difference is that IELTS is a lot more academic in nature, right? Whereas we like to say that Cambridge is a lot more natural, okay? They're teaching you more natural English, how to sound more like a native speaker, less how to sound like a university professor, and more how to sound like a real natural speaker and user of the language, okay? If you take the FCE or CAE or CPE class, you don't have to do the test. It's not required. Right? We really, really, really recommend it. Yeah? But these classes are really intense. You've got lots of homework, lots of grammar, lots of writing. And so when you're there for 12 weeks, it can be really hard to keep your motivation if you don't have a reason at the end. So I really, really recommend taking the test. And you know, with general English, every Monday, new students come, and every Friday, some students go. So the people in the class can be very different from week to week to week. But with these classes, it's the same students the whole 12 weeks. So you really get to know each other, you get to become friends, you, know, you often have like WhatsApp groups and Facebook groups, and you can kind of work with each other. So it's really nice, it's a good atmosphere. Um, and so what's on the test, okay? So we have reading and use of English. Now what that is, I'll talk about more in a minute. We have writing. Listening, beautiful, 10 points for you. And finally, speaking. Okay. Now, we are talking about the speaking test a little bit where you get to do it with a partner, which is really nice. Yeah. Um, we talked about listening a little bit. Writing, you get the opportunity to do lots of different genres. Right. And what I mean by genres is you get to learn how to use formal English, how to use informal English. When do you use it? Right? You get to learn how to do essays versus letters versus reports versus proposals versus all this different kind of stuff. Okay? Um, now, reading is pretty clear. It's reading. Okay? Now, what is use of English? Any ideas? Grammar, your favorite part. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so use of English is grammar and vocabulary. Okay? And as I said before, they're really looking at natural English. What I mean by natural English is you're looking at the kind of grammar and vocabulary people really use in real life. So not just things like conditionals and whatever, but you're also learning things like phrasal verbs. Um, and the idea of a phrasal verb is when you put these two things together, it creates a new meaning. Okay. Now, do native speakers use phrasal verbs often? Every day, all the time. Right? But in your general English textbook, we really don't cover it that much. Okay, but in Cambridge, there's a real focus on phrasal verbs. Okay, pick up. Okay, a lot of phrasal verbs can have many different meanings in many different contexts. Okay, so if I say, "Oh, hey, I'll pick you up at eight, what do I mean? I'm going to drive my car to your house, and you're going to get in my car. And we're going to go somewhere. That's a lot of information for two words. Idioms. Yeah. Idioms are phrases where the real meaning is different from the literal meaning. Okay, so for example, my favorite one, kick the bucket, kick the bucket. Now first of all, you don't kick, kick, right, okay.
okay? And what's a bucket? A container. And what do you put inside of a bucket? Food, water, corona, yeah, totally. Now, kick the bucket is an idiom. And like I said, it doesn't mean kick the bucket, it means something else. Any ideas? Kick the bucket actually means to die. Yeah, so if you say, for example, oh, I'm so sad, my goldfish kicked the bucket yesterday. Right? But you couldn't say, like, my grandmother kicked the bucket. Okay? <laughs> not, not appropriate. All right? So there's these things called idioms. And if you don't know what they mean, you can't guess. There's no way of knowing. Okay? Um, but people use these kind of phrases all the time. Um, another thing that we cover a lot of is collocations. So collocation is essentially, I mean, it's a big word that just means words that go together. Okay? And again, I'm focusing on this idea of natural English. Okay? Because remember, English, like any language, is not logical. So, for example, um, let's say you go to a bar and you're really hungry, you know, you live here in Melbourne and you want some fried fish and some fried potatoes. What do we call that? Fish and chips, beautiful. Now, can we say uh, chips and fish? No. Can we say fish and potatoes? No. Can we say fish and fries? No. Why not? It's a collocation. So um, what I'll do now is I will hand out the textbooks for you to take a look at, okay? And the idea is in this book you will notice that there are in fact, oops, I went too far. There are in fact 14 chapters. You have to go faster than one unit per week, right? So what that means is in that 12 weeks, we're going to cover 14 units plus practice test plus mock test. So it's going to be a very fast-paced course. It's not like general English. You don't just do one unit per week with a test on Friday. That's not how it works, right? It's a very flexible thing that changes every day. Some days you might do writing. Some days you might do reading. Some days you might do listening. And it's really going to change. Lots and lots of feedback from your teachers, so yeah, you'll definitely see a difference over the 12 weeks.